Hello, I'm Mr. Cannell. We're going to continue learning about simplifying fractions. Do you have a pencil and some paper? If not, pause the video, find them and come back. Here are some of the key words that you've been working with. Can you remember what they mean? We're going to be using them again in this lesson, so I'll be asking you later. In the previous lesson, Miss Heaton left you with a couple of questions. She asked you about her puppy, Bentley. She was wanting to know what is 45 sixtieths of an hour? Could you simplify it? And does using the highest common factor help? Well, her puppy would have said, oh, that's easy. 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour. So that's obviously the simplest form, three quarters. Did you find it by dividing by the highest common factor? What are the common factors? Well, there's 1, 3, 5 and 15. So the highest common factor was 15. If we divide the numerator and the denominator both by 15, we get the simplest form, don't we? Well done. Here's the other question that Miss Heaton left you with. Can the fraction 6 fifteenths be simplified? Remember, when we simplify fractions, we're trying to make the numerator and denominator as small as possible, while keeping the proportion the same. Where is the denominator? That's right, it's 15. It's the number of equal parts. Will we have a unit fraction? Well, if we were able to simplify to a unit fraction, then the numerator would become 1 because 6 divided by 6 is 1. But we'd also need to divide the denominator by 6. Is 15 in the 6 times table? No, 15 is not in the 6 times table. So we need a different factor. Think about your times tables. We want to know the highest common factor of 6 and 15. Pause if you want some thinking time. Have you found it? Did you get three? Three is a factor of six because six is in the three times table. And three is a factor of 15 because 15 is in the three times table. To simplify six fifteenths, we need to divide both the numerator and denominator by three. Six fifteenths simplifies to two fifths in its simplest form. Let's see how multiplication square could help us. You've seen an image like this in a previous lesson. I put a red circle around our denominator 15 and another one around our numerator 6. They're both in the 3 times table. So 3 is a factor of both 6 and 15. The highlighted blue rows so it show fractions that are equivalent to 6 fifteenths. Along the blue rows are all the families of fractions that are equivalent. In the first column, we see that by dividing both 6 and 15 by 3 gives us the simplest fraction, 2 fifths. We can also show 6 fifteenths on a number line between 0 and 1. The whole has been divided into 15 equal parts, so each equal part is 1 15. Here's 6 fifteenths on the number line. We said that the highest common factor of 6 and 15 is 3, because 3 is the largest number that is a factor of both 6 and 15. So, if 3 is the highest common factor, if we mark every third interval, we've now divided the whole in a different way. Here, look at the blue lines. 1, here, 2, 3, 4, 5 equal parts. Each equal part is one fifth of the whole. 6 fifteenths lines up with 2 fifths. 
So 6 fifteenths simplifies to 2 fifths. Here is a generalisation that we can use. A fraction can be simplified when the numerator and denominator have a common factor other than 1. I'd like you to say it now. Pause the video while you say it. Here's another that will help us. To write a fraction in its simplest form, divide both the numerator and denominator by the highest common factor. Can you say it now? Pause the video again. Where have we written the highest common factor? That's it. It's the number that we're dividing both the numerator and denominator by. Can you do this one? Pause the video while you write it on your paper and simplify. Let's have a look at how two children did their simplifying. They used different methods from each other. Simran simplified the fraction 8 twelfths. She divided both the numerator and denominator by 2 to get 4 sixths. Then she divided the denominator and numerator by 2 again. And Simran had 2 thirds as her simplified fraction. Lastly, Simran checked that apart from 1, there are no other factors of 2 and 3 that she could divide by. So she knew that she had found the simplest form. Sam simplified the same fraction. He divided both the numerator and denominator by 4. Sam also had 2 thirds as his, as his simplified fraction. Lastly, Sam checked that apart from 1, there are no other factors of 2 and 3 that he could divide by, so he also knew that he had found the simplest form. What's the same about the two methods? You're right, they both simplified the fraction to 2 thirds. So what's different? That's it. Simran used two steps, dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2 twice. Sam chose the highest common factor, so he only needed one step. Did you choose one of these methods? Whose method was the most efficient? It was Sam's. Sam chose the highest common factor of 8 and 12, so he only needed one step. Shall we have a look at how this looks on a number line again? The whole is divided into 12 equal parts, so each part is 1 twelfth. Here's 8 twelfths on the number line. Now we said that the highest common factor of 8 and 12 is 4, because 4 is the largest number that is a factor of both 8 and 12. So if 4 is the highest common factor, if we mark off, Every fourth interval, we've divided the whole in a different way. Look at the blue lines. Now the whole is divided into one, two, three equal parts. Each part is one third of the whole. Eight twelfths lines up with one, two thirds. So eight twelfths simplifies to two thirds. I'd like you to simplify this fraction. Which times table are both 15 and 40 in? What number are they both multiples of? Ask yourself this question. What is the highest common factor of 15 and 40? Here's 15 fourths on the number line. Pause the video if you think you can do it. Carry on a bit further if you want a bit more help. The 15 and 40 
are both in the five times table. Five is the highest times table that 15 and 40 are both in. So the highest common factor of 15 and 40 is five. We need to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest common factor, five. 40 divided by five is eight, and 15 divided by five is three. So 15 fortieths simplifies to three eighths. Did you get it? Did you use the number line idea? Here on the number line, the whole has been divided into 40 equal parts. So one part is one fortieth of the whole. The highest common factor is five. So if we go every five intervals and mark on with a blue line, there are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. Fifteen fortieths lines up with three eighths. Let's see how multiplication square could help us again. I've put a red circle around our denominator 40 and our numerator 15. They're both in the five times table. So five is a factor of both 15 and 40. The highlighted blue rows show fractions that are equivalent to 15 fortieths. In the first column, we see that by dividing both 15 and 40 by five, gives us the simplest fraction, three eighths. Which images are you finding the most helpful? So our final step is to check whether we have the fraction in its simplest form. Can you explain it? Pause for a thing. We can use this stem sentence. The fraction is in its simplest form because the only remaining common factor of m and m is m. You're going to put numbers in where I, where I said m. Pause the video now to write it down or say it out loud. Here we go then, let's say it together. The fraction is in its simplest form because the only remaining common factor of 3 and eight is one. So this is our strategy for expressing a fraction in its simplest form efficiently. First, identify the highest common factor of the numerator and denominator. Then divide the numerator and denominator by the highest common factor. Finally, check that the fraction is in its simplest form because the only remaining common factor of the numerator and denominator is one. You can come back to this slide if you need to later. Let's do some practice. Ellen says that 6 eighteenths will simplify to a unit fraction. Do you agree? If you have someone with you, discuss your ideas and pause the video. Hello again. Do you agree with Ellen? Copy the stem sentence and write your ideas down. The numerator 6 is or isn't a factor of the denominator 18. So 6 eighteenths will or will not simplify to a unit fraction. Pause the video while you write it down. Did you agree with Ellen? I hope so. Let's read the stem sentence. The numerator 6 is a factor of the denominator 18, so 6 eighteenths will simplify to a unit fraction. So 6 eighteenths simplifies to one third because we divide the numerator and denominator both by 6. 
Here's another practice question. Anna says that she has simplified 1824 into its simplest form. Do you agree? What do you think? If you have someone with you, discuss your ideas and pause the video. Hello again. Did you agree with Anna? Here's a stem sentence. Copy it out and write down your ideas. It'll go along the lines of Anna has or has not divided by the highest common factor. So 9 twelfths is or is not the simplest form of 18 twenty-fourths. Pause the video while you write it down. Did you agree with Anna? She has simplified 18 twenty-fourths, but she didn't use the highest common factor. So she, Anna has not divided by the highest common factor. So 9 twelfths is not the simplest form of 18 twenty-fourths. So what is 18 twenty-fourths expressed in its, high, in its simplest form? Can you do it? Remember to find the highest common factor first. Pause the video while you work out your answer. Did you find the highest common factor is 6? Because 6 is a factor of 18 and 24. So 18 over 24. Divide the numerator and denominator both by 6. And we have 3 quarters. Did you get that? Well done if you did. So the next time, I'd like you to express these fractions in their simplest form by finding the highest common factor first. You could rewind the video if you want to find the strategy. And remember to check at the end, won't you? See you next time.